Uh, good evening, um, or good morning, wherever you're at. Um, haven't tied in a while, and um, right. about a week ago, I guess, um, <laughs> I posted like seven or eight videos in one week. Um, but anyway, Paige and I were in Ireland on a tour, and um, tried to look for an opportunity to fly fish, but didn't really get that opportunity. And that's fine. But, um, we were at a place called Clan, uh, Clan McNoise. It was, um, at one point was, um, monastery and, um, church and things like that. And it was, they set it up and it was attacked many, many times before it was finally shut down back in the ancient days, like in the 800s or something in Ireland but we were walking around in one of the exhibits and they had a building um, there was a place where I saw a spider web and I saw a, a mayfly stuck in it took a picture of it and I thought it'd be fun to just kind of come back and recreate that fly <sighs> excuse me so um, the let's see if I have so I made one here, I'll go ahead and turn this around. Get this up here. Okay, that's probably good right there. So this is the fly I'm gonna recreate. Um, I've made one already. I'm using a gray wing. Um, using black thread because the body has. Uh, even where the wings are and where the legs are, the the thorax there is um, black, and the tail is kind of grayish. So, excuse me, just using um, using stuff that I have uh, here already. I'm gonna just try to recreate that fly. Uh, so what I'm using is um, this is a bait holder. Uh, this is from a set. This is, I usually use an eagle claw. Um, usually I tie with these on my videos. Now, I don't always tie with these whenever I'm making flies to fish with, but um, recently I've been just tying on a budget, and these are about as cheap as you can get. This is two ninety five or something at Walmart for something like 150 hooks, and it's three different sizes. Um, but these are bait holders, and they have a flat eye. Then I found these. This is maybe four or five bucks, and it's got about five or six different sizes in it. A good quantity of hooks, and one of the reasons that I picked those is because they have a downturned eye, which is great looking for dry flies. Um, kind of helps with the the way their head is so the bait holder has the barbs on the top of the hook here that help hold the bait and then it has of course the the barb on the hook and I always want to try to knock those barbs down I'll take this light oh no not the color I'm gonna take the temperature down a little bit there there we go um, but it also has a weird bend to it I don't want to take that bend out, so I'm just going to put it in the vise here and just pull a little bit. And you got to be careful with these because they're hardened, and sometimes they get a little bit brittle and they'll break on you when you try to bend them and straighten them. But as long as you get it to where it lays pretty flat, and that's the way I like them. And then, of course, I'll take this and put it in this way and use that to knock those barbs down. Just use your vise like pliers. Press those down, um, mainly because they'll cut your thread. <clears throat> and then we'll take this one and turn it sideways and crush that barb down as well. There's some places, like when I was looking at places to fish in Ireland and I was considering trying to fish, um, you have to use barbless hooks. And they make hooks that are already barbless, of course, but... Um, I have not. Whenever I go to buy hooks, I don't always think of that. 
usually I stop on the way home from work and the place on the way home from work is Walmart so I get whatever hooks they have and get ones that'll look the best for what I'm doing because these flies are mainly demonstrations um, although I fish with them when I get an opportunity okay so my um, materials are uh, I've got this feather I'm going to use the barbs for the tail then I'm going to strip the rest of this off and I'm going to use this quill for the body. Then I've got this, I believe when you when you have a feather that's like this with black in the middle and white on the edges, I believe they call this furnace. I don't know why, but that's furnace. I think that's right. If I'm not right, you can leave a comment and let me know. Um, and this is not the greatest of hackles. Um, I do have this better hackle here that is um, grizzly hackle. I'm going to double those up and use them together to get the look that I want on that. And then I've got this these gray feathers that on the end are kind of long and blunt almost on the end. And I'm going to use the end of that, of two of those, to make my wing. Um, but let me get started because it's time-consuming fly a little bit. Got my black thread. This is um, Unithread 8 aught. I don't really concern myself too much with the kind of thread that I use. Um, the only thing that I watch out for is if I'm making uh, a small fly with a thick, like a thick thread like that, and I'll end up having way too bulky of a fly. So. I didn't, when I first bought those, these are threads that I bought whenever I first started, and I didn't know fly tying thread from a hole in the ground, so I just bought the colors and not knowing the difference. But I haven't gone through them yet, so I keep using them. Just try to be smart about how I use them. Get the dullest scissors in the world. I'll trim that off. And all I'm doing is putting a thread base down up to the bend of the hook, a little bit past the bend. This does two things. It gives you a base to tie to. Um, it gives you a rough surface on there so that the materials hold better. Um, I'm going to start with my tailpiece. So basically, um, these mayflies when you look at them a lot of people will put a bunch of these barbs on the back but when you look at those flies they don't really have a lot of barbs on their tail there's not a lot of pieces there so i'm just going to grab you know four or five here of these barbs and i'm going to make them kind of long because they're kind of long i'm going to make them just a little bit longer than the body uh another thing is that i i looked at um I was watching a video on YouTube. This guy found this fly box that was like a hundred years old or something. It had all these old flies in it. And some of those old flies, the dry flies, had really long, wispy tails that looked really cool. It kind of changed my mind about how I like my flies to look. So. But, um, you know, those flies that I saw in the pic that I took a picture of, they had a really long, long body and then that long, wispy tail. Uh, so, um, I don't have great long shank hook. Um, this is about as long as it gets without being too big. So, this is the one I've got to use. Um, so, just getting a good base here to try to thicken up this body. Um, the next part, uh, the thickness comes from the quill of the feather. I'm going to rip off these barbs. I'm going to save them. i put them down here in my drawer and save them because I can still use the, still use the barbs for the tails for other flies. But I'm just taking this and I'm just ripping these all off. I don't want to get down to the quill of this feather. Just take them off these these uh are still coming off in clumps so i can still find them and get them to line up the way i want them like that 
I pull them off, they kind of stay together. So it's not wasting the feather completely. Although, along with my thread that I bought whenever I first started fly fishing many, many years ago and fly tying, um, I also have a ton of feathers that I bought in a mixed pack and I have not used them all. I've got so many feathers that I've had since I started fly tying um, and I've never used them up. This might be, this is maybe the second time that I've used these gray feathers I'm using for a wing. I'm just going to take a little bit of this end off of there where it got a little thin. And all I'm going to do is tie this in. A little bit of an angle here. And I also want to come around everything and come under that tail. Make sure that it kind of stays up. I don't want it to get bound down and follow the shank of the hook um, in the bend. So now I'm going to move a little bit past the, past the point of the hook. I just want to leave myself enough room. I'll come back a little bit. Um, leave myself enough room to put in my, my hackles the wing and everything so this doesn't make a very long thorax this section here compared to what the real fly looks like but the overall fly when you're done kind of gives that look so it doesn't to me it doesn't really matter if I was going for a really realistic fly I would maybe use foam or something that stuck off the, the hook a little bit uh, but I'm not going for that I'm just going for a general casting fly. If I was really targeting a fish, I would really change that up. But that's not what this is for. So I'm just going to wrap this so that it touches all the way up until I get to where my thread is hanging there. And the good thing about these quills is they they get bigger as they go. So as I wrap forward, it's going to give me my segmented look, which these the abdomens have, or the thorax, or whatever you call it. But it's also going to, as I move forward, it's going to take up more room. And it'll get a little bit thicker as I go. If I get too far into the shaft, though, it starts to get kind of chunky and pieces will hang off. And it won't look right. So looks like I'm going to get right about where I need to right here. Take one more turn. So right in there, it's going to start getting weird looking. So I'm just going to take that and wrap around and tighten that down. Just a couple of turns to hold that in. Hold that in place. And then I'll just snip this trash off. Right there. Okay, now... weird hanging off the top there. I'm trying to snip that off. Doesn't really matter, but if you want the overall look to be appealing to yourself, then do what you need to do. I'm going to go ahead and put a little varnish on that too, a little um, nail polish. So I've taken my nail polish and I took the brush out and I have um, just a needle in there and that's more for the head of the fly when I'm done but it holds quite a bit of polish still and you just, you just make it so you can spread it pretty easily um, I'll have to watch out though because this I used a safety pin to make that and it's already Starting to tarnish a little bit. Just have to be careful of that. Anyway, let's get on with it. Um, my next step, I want to come forward here. I want to tie my wings. Because that can be um, a little bit of a hassle if you already have your hackle started. So I'm going to pick two of these that are similar in size. I have no idea what kind of bird this comes off of. 
these gray feathers. Um, they're pretty. And they're kind of, to me, they're kind of perfect for these wings. So I've got two with similar tops. And I'm going to, they, they curl like that. I'm going to put them so the curls are facing each other. When I tie it on, they'll do like that and they'll help it stand up straight. I'm just going to go back. I'm going to hold this here and just pull these back until I see kind of what I want. That's probably a good height. And basically I want to match the height of what my hackles are going to be. And that's pretty close to it right there. I'm going to lean back just a little bit like that. If you've ever seen these kind of flies on the river, you know exactly. Before I started fly fishing, my wife and I went camping with some friends of ours in Texas at Canyon Lake. And they had been, it had been flooding. And we were there at night and we had a campfire going. We had some lights up. And these mayflies were just driving us crazy. And I had never seen them before. And these were big white ones and they were everywhere. And if I had known about fly fishing back then, I would have totally had a big white mayfly tied on and I would have been fishing with that. Instead we were fishing for some wor with some worms, like fake worms, and didn't catch nothing. So all I'm doing, I've got these feathers on either side of the hook, facing you know the curve against each other. And I tied with them leaning back first, and I'm going to go pull these forward and go on the other side of them. And it'll help them stand up more straight. And that'll just make it easier. Should make it easier. Whenever I come in with the hackle, uh, to go on either side of it when I wrap forward. So now I'm going to take my two hackles here. Like I said, I have the, the furnace hackle and the grizzly hackle. And I'm just going to make, I'm going to get where they're about the same part of the feather and just start stripping this back. I don't want this black part to be too big, so I'm going to not take very much of that. I'm going to go about halfway up. I'm just going to rip these out. And then take this one. Now this one I want more of because it's more the same all the way down. I'm going to go about here. But it's going to give me about about the same length. It's going to give me roughly the same length of feather to work with when it's all done. And I'm just going to take this. <clears throat> After I've got them trimmed, I'm just going to snip the quill. So they're ready to tie in. And I'm going to tie them in one at a time. Uh, I'm going to take the, there's a, the side that faces out and the side that faces in. I want the side that faces in to face me when I tie it in. Just hold that against the hook and bring it down. I'm trying not to get these barbs from this wing stuck in there. Gotta pull that forward so I have room to work. That's pretty good right there couple of turns and then go ahead and tie in the second one same thing same place a couple of turns doesn't take much to hold these things in because all you're doing is holding in a place and then once you start wrapping forward and tying stuff you really bind it in with a lot of thread and that's the least of your worries when your fly starts coming if your fly comes apart I'm more likely to break the hackle and have it come unraveled than I am to have the string lose the <clears throat> the, the um, quill where it's tied in. So I'm going to snip this down a little bit. I'm just leaving a little bit of a stump there. Just enough for the string to hold on to. <clears throat> I'm just going to wrap this so that that quill gets tied down and smooth and gives me a good base to wrap my quills 
to wrap my hackles. I'm going to move that forward so I can wrap a little easier. I'm just covering that quill up as I go. And this is a little bit small thread to try to cover up a big thing like that, but eventually it'll do the trick and do enough of what I need. And I'm just going to come all the way forward to my head. Leave a little space for the head to tie in. I want to have some room to tie behind that feather and in front of that feather. And still have room to tie my head off before the eye of the hook. Okay. So I'm just going to grab these one at a time. I've got, I've got a hackle plier. You squeeze here and it gives you something to grip with. And it gives you a place to put your finger to hold it so you can wrap. And all I'm going to do is just wrap forward until I run out of feather. And you can decide if you want to tie in. I tied in the, the wide part. And it'll taper a little bit forward. Um, you might decide to tie in on the tip of the feather instead and tie so it gets bigger as it goes forward. Uh, you definitely tend to do that if you're tying something like a woolly booger. I don't know that it matters too much in these flies. I've never had a problem. I'm just doing it this way. This is a little bit of a big hackle. You see the barbs are pretty good ways past the, um, the bend of the hook and the, the point of the hook. But that doesn't bother me. I like that on my, white, on my dry flies. I like to have a lot of fluff. To me, it makes them float better. And makes them present a little better. So I'm just hold my thread up out of the way. Get in here and snip that trash out of there. And I'm gonna grab the other one. And all I'm gonna do, and this is the one that's gonna actually make a better black center on these feathers. So I'm just going to do the same exact thing with this one and just wrap it through. And all you do is you just wiggle back and forth a little bit and it gets in between those other barbs and that it helps you avoid tying those barbs down and losing them. Because sometimes you get to this point and you start wrapping it forward and you grab all your barbs and when you're done you have this really sparse fly. It doesn't look the way it's supposed to. This is a you know, this is pretty thick, but I, like I said, I don't care. The fish will like it, and that's that. So I'll just take this and wrap forward two or three times. I'm going to hold some holding the thread out of the way on my, right here on my finger. That way I can get in here and snip this off without cutting my thread. And some people that tie flies are able to just grab that feather and break it off. I don't like to do that because I've broken it off and it broke off on the other side of the thread and you have to go in and rewrap the feather and whatever. I don't like to do that. I prefer to I prefer to just cut mine. Although the flip side of that is I've done it and I've cut the string. And then you have a different problem. But I just want to get in here. And get these loose where I've caught these barbs here and just pull this back give it several turns so I get a good head here just building up that black head my whip finisher. Usually I tie my flies off using a, a finger tying method. I put in a couple of half hitches but this just saves a couple of steps. So I'm just going to do the whip finisher. Four or five turns. 
bring it up, tie it off. It's a good ender there. We'll come back and snip this, like I said. And there again, some people can just break that string off, but I just don't like to do that. Turn this a little bit so you can see what the head looks like. And this is where the needle comes in handy on the on the nail polish. So I can just get a glob of nail polish on the end of that needle. And I can just reach in and put it right where I want it without having to use the nail polish brush and get it all over the place. It helps me avoid getting it in the eye of the hook and getting it all over the feathers. And so, just make that kind of stand up straight. That's pretty much it, that, um, except, you know, so the only thing about this fly is I didn't make this part as long as the real one was. Those things have a shorter body where the wings and the legs are, and then the tail is a little bit longer. But you throw that on the water and it lays down, um, it'll lay... So I made this one also a little bit different. Um, because of the coloring of the tail, and then that's this part here, the quill that I used was darker. I actually like this one better, but it, uh, remember I said I took a picture of two different ones, and that's pretty much the two differences. The, the tail was a different color. So, uh, but when this lands on the water, it rides just like that, the way they look when they're floating. When they come out of the water and they rise up and they lay their eggs and fly away and come back and the fish eat them. So, anyway, that is my, I'm going to call this my, um, my Clan McNoise Mayfly. So, thanks for watching. Brandon and Davison and hope you enjoyed. Have a good night.